Welcome to Tapping Vegas, brought to you by Better and Green. We are going over Hinato Moicano versus Benoit Saint Denis today. We're giving you five of the fights across the pod to win you guys some money. Last time we were out, not so hot, but all those times before that were really, really good. So we're heading back on track after a week for the UFC to regroup and for us to regroup. I have a really good feeling about this week. Bobby, are you ready to get into these fights, man? I'm ready. Let's do it. First fight we're going to talk about is Ludovic Klein facing Roosevelt Roberts. Bobby, in this fight, Roberts is a huge underdog. Klein, huge favorite. But the interesting thing I found about this fight is if we're looking at it from a Vegas perspective, Bobby, 53% of the money is on Roberts. And it makes sense, kind of, that he is such a high um, underdog that people are wanting to get paid out on it. Bobby, whenever we see these huge lines like this, we see it with Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel wins. They, Vegas knows Ludovic Klein's going to win this fight. And it's just as simple as that. So there's no way in hell that Vegas is going to pay out over 50%, 53% of the money at over six times the money. At plus 625, I just think it's ridiculous. I think that makes this fight really easy to predict. Also, looking at the screen right now, almost all the statistics are in Ludovic Klein's favor. You can't take him on the money line. I'm going to throw that out there. Everybody knows that you could not take a minus 950. Um, and especially, like, I know there's some people that like taking huge favorites and throwing a ton of money on it and then winning, like, throw 10000 and win 500 bucks. I don't ever do that in general, but especially not in the UFC where just one punch can end it all. So you're going to have to go to the methods. I hopped over here, minus 120 for the KO, plus 500 for the submission, plus 200 for the decision. We can go down to double method, minus 700 for the KO decision, minus 175 for the KO sub, and plus 110 for sub decision. I'm kind of surprised that KO decision is minus 700. That is still incredibly high. Um, even taking out one of the methods. So here, I, I feel like you could go the KO at the minus 120. I feel like that's what happens. Um, but Klein's had a couple submission wins. So I am going to go the KO sub at minus 175. That is the best double method you can get besides the submission decision. Um, just, I just have a feeling that he's going to get the knockout, but it does worry me if Roberts is just tough enough and he just outlasts it. And then I'm losing anyways, but I would much rather lose at the minus 175 and say, you know what? The decision got me than lose at a minus 700 or worse. What do you think, Bobby? Yeah, it's pretty much exactly how I feel. A little bit. Klein is a very, Good fighter, uh, definitely belongs uh, in the upper echelons of uh, of the of the uh, division. And unfortunately, Roosevelt Roberts. I mean, this is his second run in the UFC, coming off the Ultimate Fighter season where McGregor and Chandler coached against each other, but never ended up fighting each other. As entertaining as Roosevelt Roberts is, and everything, and as sad as it would be to see him to go again and you know lose his second chance. I just think Ludovic Klein's too good, uh, too experienced, you know, well-rounded everywhere, better everywhere, and don't really have much to add differently. I think he's going to take it home, and, yeah, it's to kind of offset those odds, might as well try to do the best double method. I love it, man. I love it. All right, Bobby, break down the second one. Ian Kutalaba versus Ivan Urslan. So I'm not really sure why this one's so close. Kutalaba currently minus 105. Urslan's at a minus 115. Uh, Kutalaba has been in the UFC for a while, 17-10-1. Uh, Kutalaba lost uh, March of this year. Unanimous decision loss to Felipe Lenz. Beat Tanner Bozer by ground and pound uh, last April. Nothing to really brag about there. Uh, very inactive lately. Before that, last fall, 29, uh, excuse me, 2022, November 19th, lost to Kennedy and Chokwu by strikes in round two. Very embarrassing. 
Lost to Johnny Walker by rear naked September 2022. Very embarrassing. And lost to Ryan Span by guillotine May 14th, 2022. Very embarrassing. And I think the, uh, Kutatalaba is another guy who, even though he's only 30 years old, uh, you know, not very old, but he's got a lot of losses. And he's been in the UFC now ever since. Do, 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 do. Been in the UFC since uh, 2016. June 18th, 2016 was when he made his debut and he lost his debut. It's like he's a very up and down guy. And unfortunately, he's just another guy who's probably going to be heading for the chopping block here soon because Ursan's 14 and 3. He's 32, 6 foot 3 with a 74 inch reach, which beats, uh, actually, no, it doesn't actually. Kuta Dalaba's 6 1 with a 75 inch reach. But nevertheless, it's not a huge reach disadvantage for Ursan. Uh, Ursan, it's his UFC debut, uh, coming over from KSW, a very good Polish promotion. Kind of spotty in KSW, nothing really to write home about. Has some wins, has some losses, nothing crazy though. But good uh, feeder league for the UFC, so it's nice to see him have a little bit of a high-level pro experience before coming into the UFC. Uh, let's see. Looks like he is primarily a striker. 71% of his wins uh, for a total of 10 have come by way of strikes. Not really a sub guy, just one sub win for 7%. Decisions, the next uh, highest amount with 21% of his wins coming by decision. Uh, Kutatalaba is also a TKO guy. 76% of his wins for 13 have come by TKO. Loses primarily by sub, 40% of losses by sub. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Ursulon on this. I just think he's, you know... He's the uh, next guy, next guy up, you know. So I just think he's going to have an element that Kutatalaba is not going to be prepared for. I think Kutatalaba is, like I said, just a guy who's kind of destined to kind of uh, probably end his UFC tenure here soon. And Ursan's going to kind of take that momentum. And as soon as I quit being oppressed by DraftKings, I'll tell you what <laughs> methods I'm kind of looking at for this right here because – could be some very good methods to try to make some money off of with this with uh, Ursulon because I'm leaning towards either KO, TKO, or decision, or maybe doing like a double of that because I don't know if he can get the sub because even though uh, Kutatalaba has a lot of sub losses, I'm not really seeing that Ursulon's kind of a sub guy. So let's see if we go double chance for. Ursulon by KO, TKO, or decision. That's only at a minus 105. KO, TKO, or sub plus 120. Submission or decision plus 75. 475, excuse me. Ah, sucks. It sucks because. Hmm. I'm going to say, just to be a silly goose, <laughs> submission or decision at plus 475 is what I'm going to go with to try and make some money here. So what do you think, Ben? I think that is a silly goose ass answer, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be on Kudalaba because nobody else is right now. Um, he's one and four in his last five fights. So he's not a lot going for him there, but Ursula, this is his first fight at the next level in the UFC. I think Kudalaba has been in for a while. He's had, some pretty good competition. He's had some good learning experiences is what we like to call losses. Um, also just like a few hours ago, uh, when we were making all these graphics and stuff, Kudalaba was actually the favorite. Now it's flopped. A ton of money is coming in on Ursulon. So now it's actually the stats you see on your screen are pretty much flipped. Uh, Kudalaba is at minus one Oh five. I recommend holding off a little bit longer. I think we're going to get plus odds on him. Um, 35% of the money is currently on Kudalaba, which is very interesting for a pick em that a lot of people are pulling their money in on the new guy uh, and 44% of bets. So we are seeing some sharp money coming out on Ursulon, but they're not going to want to pay that out, especially now that we're seeing that even more and more and more money keeps pouring in on him. Um, that's just kind of how I see this fight coming down. And once again, like Bobby's giving you a lot of the um, like kind of like fight statistics and stuff. I'm looking at it from a Vegas side. 
All right, heading to the next fight, we have Kevin Josette versus Brian Battle. This is the first of the three French fighters we're going to be talking <laughs> about. It was a really tough day when the UFC went to Canada. A lot of their Canadian guys lost. And then we just saw for UFC Noche, celebrating Mexican fighters, a ton of the Mexican fighters lost. So it is not, hey, you know, home field advantage. We're celebrating these guys. It's really not like that. And I think people are seeing that in some of these fights. Um, this fight, the odds aren't too far off. Minus 170 for battle. Um, he just beat the Jesus out of Angelusa. It made him actually quit. And I know he's going to say, oh, he couldn't see. Well, all of a sudden he could see as soon as the fight was over. Um, I have to go with Brian Battle here. And unfortunately, that is against the side of Vegas because he's getting 76% of the money, 81% of bets. So we're seeing about 5% of sharp money on Kevin, but I can't do it. I think that the hosting country or the represented country is going to have another, possibly an, another rough start here. What do you think, Bobby? Yeah, uh, Brian Battle is just very crisp, very technical with his striking. I really think in that Angelusa fight, uh, it was an example of kind of a coming out party for Brian Battle. It was kind of going to be an opportunity for him to showcase himself and showcase his skill set, uh, you know, on a pretty pretty decent card against, you know, for at the time where he was and where he was uh, coming up uh, coming up at, you know, a decent opponent. Obviously, nobody's going to say that Angelus is a world beater, but it was a very good test for Brian Battle uh, to try to overcome because Brian Battle – is uh you know still a guy who's young in his UFC career. He's uh, only been in the UFC since 2021. Came in in August, but had a canceled bout with Treshawn Gore. So ended up making his debut against Gilbert Urbina. Beat him with a rear naked. Uh, did finally end up beating Treshawn Gore and facing him unanimous decision in 2022. Beat Takashi Sato with a head kick. Lost to Fina Hakradina uh, December two years ago. No shame in that because. Fakradinov has looked pretty good since then, kind of an underrated guy in the division. Beat great Gabe Green with the right hook, A.J. Fletcher with the rear naked, no contest with Angelusa. Now he's going up against Je uh, Kevin Jusay. Uh, and so fun fact about Brian Battle, uh, currently he is fighting at welterweight, and he started his career at heavyweight, actually. Ended up uh, really? started training MMA when he was around 300 pounds. And uh, lost a lot of weight to get down to 170. Lost uh, all that weight to get down there. And that's kind of where he feels comfortable at now. So, yeah, started off as a heavyweight in MMA. Uh, there's a video going around right now on social media of his uh, first knockout loss. And uh, it was pretty brutal. And that's when he decided, all right, heavyweight's not for me. Uh, I'm out on that. So, yeah, Michael Andre, I think, is the KO TKO in round one that he suffered uh, in his professional debut back in 2017. Excuse me, his amateur debut in uh, 2017. And, uh, yeah, he only has two losses. Uh, one in his amateur debut and his last amateur fight. And then his second pro fight. And then didn't lose again until he lost to Fakradinov. So, doesn't have very many lo uh, losses, but... Yeah, head kicked in his heavyweight debut, which was his first ever MMA match, and then he started losing weight and working his way down to 170, and now I think he's found a home at 170, and I think uh, Kevin Jusay is going to be a good litmus test for him. I think he's going to pass it with flying colors. <coughs> as far as which method I think he's going to be able to take it with, let me pull it on up here because it's definitely going to be Brian Battle for me. And I think he's probably going to get a KO or TKO because he's, like I said, his striking was looking phenomenal in that uh, Orange Lusa fight. And I kind of feel like we got robbed of a KO, TKO finish by him. But, we did. you know, we'll be a hype. So, mm. <coughs> KO, TKO. Hmm. KO, TKO or sub plus 250, but KO, TKO or decision, you're only getting at a minus 120. <coughs> Let's see. I think I'm going to uh, – I might be coming back to this later. So I'm going to go just KOTKO outright for Brian Battle at a 
plus 500 for now, but I might switch it around later. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. I, I like it, man. I I would love to see that. I'd love this to be a no-sweat bet for us. Uh, Bobby, why don't you break down this fourth fight? Yeah, so the next fight we got Nazardine Imavov going up against Brendan Allen. Uh, this is a very exciting fight at uh, middleweight, 185 pounds. Uh, it's going to determine, I believe, who's kind of next in line for a potential title shot, or at least the uh, number two contender is going to be sorted out after this is said and done. Imavov, I feel like, is too big of a favorite at minus 218. Allen's underdog, plus 180. Uh, Imavov's coming off the Jared Cannoneer, weird KO, TKO. Uh, also beat the Leeds A in a sloppy, sloppy decision. Lost to Sean Strickland pretty uh, decisively. Brendan Allen's kind of had a nice little career resurgence. Got his um, loss to Chris Curtis. Got that back in blood by beating him pretty handily in a unanimous decision back in April of this year. Uh, submitted Paul Craig. Submitted Bruno Silva. Submitted Christoph Jocko. Beat Jacob, Jacob Malkoon. Submitted Sam Alvey. Like, dude didn't lose until 2021 when he first fought Chris Curtis and got KOTKO. Before that, he was just cruising. Uh, Sean Strickland also KOTKO'd him, but, you know, this could be his opportunity after only losing to Sean Strickland and Chris Curtis, <laughs> who used to be buddies and training partners together and all that. He avenged his loss to Chris Curtis. He could be very well potentially on the way to avenging his loss to Sean Strickland in the near future if he wins this fight, which I think he will because – Imavov, where he's going to be challenged is in the grappling. Imavov wants to just stand with you. He wants to point fight. He wants to pop, pop, stay away, you know, be evasive and all that. And Roman Delize had a great bit of success in their fight, uh, holding down Imavov until he gassed out and just got picked apart. I don't think Brendan Allen's going to gas out. I don't think he's going to get picked apart because if it does stay standing, he has a lot better striking than Roman Delize, enough to be able to hold his own or initiate his game plan and segue that into takedown attempts and mix the martial arts and whatnot. So I'm not really worried even if it does stay standing. I think Brendan Allen has the gas tank. I, has, I think he has the takedowns. I think he has the clinch work. I think he has all the tools together to be able to dictate where this fight takes place at, which preferably for him, I feel like it should take place through primarily grappling. And especially when you can get Brendan Allen to win by sub outright at plus 600 when the man wins by sub more than any other method, it almost feels like cheating. You know, it's a bit ridiculous to be able to get uh, a sub at that great odds. Even if you go Brendan Allen sub or decision, that's still a plus 185 on top of the money line that he's already at a plus 185 on. So I think I'm going to go for now. I'm just going to go money line on this, and then I could be revisiting this for a haymaker, I think. What do you think, Ben? I think this would be a banger apex um, fight of the night. <laughs> like, this is yeah. a really, really good fight. A um, little jealous that France gets this one, but I th – these guys are both good and around the same age. This is a really tough one. This is probably – one of the hardest ones I feel like I've had to dissect that we've done. I don't know, man. Yeah, you're right with Brendan Allen. He's got the grappling, and he could catch Imovov. He could hold him down, but Imovov too could just play the distance and just pit, 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 pat, 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 just point fight the whole time. I think Imovov probably at the end of this fight has more punches. Allen probably has more control time. Um, this fight just feels so even to me. This feels like such a coin flip. And looking at the odds, I I agree. Like, you would want to take Allen in that scenario. Especially <laughs> since Allen has an aspect that Imovov doesn't. But I also have to look at it from the Vegas side. And it's really interesting that it's a complete even split. 50-50 in money for both of these two guys. We're actually seeing, a, I believe, a 10% sharp play on Allen, I believe it is. But even at that point, they're, they're saying it's a close fight, so they're doing the extra 10% of the cash on the plus 180. I can't see Vegas. Once again, Vegas never loses, they say. 
paying out, they can pay out 50% of the money at less than half at the minus 218, or they can pay out 50% of the money at almost double at the plus 180, plus 185. So if they say the house never loses, I have to go with Imovov on this one. Uh, it's right there close to that like minus 200 line that I I stick around before I start going to the methods. I guess I'll stick with that one so I can just get out with half a unit on it. But this is a really close fight, and I think I'm just going to have to go with the side that Vegas is telling me. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to stick with money line on this right now to just be safe. So, Yeah, I love that, man. All right, we're going to head to this last fight. It is Hinato Moicano versus Benoit Saint-Denis. Excellent fight. I was a little surprised that Hinato Moicano is like the same size as Saint-Denis and Poirier and all those guys. I don't know why, just in my head, I just thought Moicano was smaller. He just seemed smaller to me. He's a pretty good underdog. This is another good chance for the favorite at home to lose. But I feel like Benoit Saint-Denis, he just rebounds from Poirier. I think if he brings what he brought against uh, Poirier in that first round, I think he can finish Moicano in round one. He just seems like... I, and I think Hanato Moicano, too, uh, at this stage in his career, we saw Saint-Denis kind of take a step back after that loss. He had a pretty good hype train going. But Moicano's just becoming more and more popular. He's got his YouTube channel. He's friends with MMA Guru. And this is one of the things that we talked about is that just Vegas feasts on the public images. So it worries me that Moicano is, is going to be a trap here. So I'm going to go with St. Denis. Uh, minus 290. That's pretty nasty. So if we take, we head over to the methods, I believe... They have like a double method for the KO sub, minus 185. So you're knocking off about 100 points there. I think I'm going to do that because I think Benoit Saint-Denis gets the finish here. Um, also, five-round fight. Uh, we did see Saint-Denis kind of gas, but once again, he had like that whole staff thing going on. He was on the antibiotics, and people say that, you know, you're, it affects your gas tank. Ugh. Yeah, I have to go with the KO sub at the minus 185. Still a disgusting number, but I'm just I'm gonna like hate myself if, if I take like the KO minus 110. That's not great. I'd rather have the extra method and get the extra what 70 points or win by submission plus 350. Like I just don't know if that's enough when I feel like it's gonna be a KO win to pull me away. What do you think, Bobby? Yeah, it looks like uh, Saint Denis can crack. Uh, I mean, even before he lost to Poirier, he was tagging him on the feet. Dustin looked right. rocked quite a few times. Right. Uh, you know, Morikano seems prone to being rocked. I mean, before mm -hmm. he beat Jalen Turner, he got almost, you know, finished, almost stopped at, at Jalen Turner, jumped on instead of trying to get a walk off. He probably would have been TKO'd. Uh, zombie, you know, TKO'd him pretty bad. So he definitely can be cracked, and going up against somebody that can uh, put your lights out like St. Denis is kind of a recipe for disaster exactly. Uh, kind of interesting if this goes to grappling what might transpire uh, because Agreed. I would give the edge 100% to Morikano there. But, I mean, every fight starts standing, and for how I think it's going to play out, I think it's going to be primarily a striking affair. But... Yeah, that's the only thing that concerns me. The only thing that would cause me to pick Morikano is how much do I anticipate grappling playing a role because it would definitely be an edge there. But I just think it's going to be a striking affair. I think Denise gets it done. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the same method as you as well. And really the sub in there is because we were talking about, like, uh, not the <laughs> grappling method. We give that to Morikano. Yeah, but we saw with, like, Molly McCann. Uh, Bobby, you had, like, a perfect word for it. Like, the, when you're just beating the guy – beat him to a tar and then you just get the sub sub from punches or something you call it um, oh yeah yeah yeah. i, I feel like, like that it. could happen here uh bobby at the end of the show what are you thinking for uh the haymaker yeah there's some uh pretty decent haymakers out here on this i have to say uh 
So money line for Brendan Allen, and I'm just going to say Brendan Allen sub at plus 600. That's going to be my haymaker to you. So okay. double up on that. I like it, man. I like it. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys got some good information from this. Uh, go out there and place your bets. If you'd like to see what we're on and other sports bettors, make sure you download the app Sharps. Use code BET269. That's B-E-T-T-269. Let them know we sent you. Uh, you can tail plays straight from the app. You press the whale tail. It'll take you straight to the sports book. And check out Fantasy Sports Advice Network, too. If you're a fantasy football guy, it's got plenty of experts over there. We answer a whole bunch of, like, start sit questions, anything fantasy football related. You throw it in there. You get a ton of people that jump in to help you make your decisions. And besides that, guys, we're going to be back with more UFC next week. Thank you for watching. We are come to you every Friday. Peace, guys. Peace.